You know, there are a lot of ways of consulting the aging. Yarrow stalks, coins, beads, marbles, and then there are the websites with online readings, and it doesn't matter which of these you use or how you use it. All that matters is the quality of your attention. So choose the method that supports you best in holding your intent for the reading clear in your mind. And don't ever think you have to wait until you have the correct equipment to do it right before you can start. You can start today with coins. They're not my favourite. I use beads, but they're simple and they're available. Every now and then someone will email me to ask about where they can find special I Ching coins. Well, Google is your friend, I suppose, except that this is completely unnecessary. If you think about the first people who consulted I Ching with coins, they didn't go in search of special antique coins from an exotic foreign culture. How could they? They had to use the only kind of coins they had, which were the same kind they traded with. So why wouldn't you do the same? If I use the coins from my purse, then I'm using part of my ordinary, everyday human life. Um, I could take these coins and use them to buy a tin of beans or put them towards a pair of new socks. Or I could use them to make a spiritual connection out of that ordinary daily stuff. And I think that's really what consulting I Ching is about. It's really what you're doing, is creating spiritual connection, often actually out of ordinary daily stuff, and certainly never separate from the daily stuff. So you're going to build a hexagram using coins. Here's an example hexagram, and here's another one. You get the idea. There are 64 different hexagrams. They're a kind of six-layered diagram of interacting energies. A hexagram is made of two kinds of line, open and solid. You'll often hear these called yin and yang, though the hexagrams have been around a good bit longer than the concept of yin and yang. Their lines are solid, firm and active, or open, soft and receptive. But it gets more interesting because solid or open isn't a fixed state. A line can be changing from one to the other. Solid that's in the middle of changing to open is drawn like this. And open that's in the middle of changing to solid is drawn like this. A common way of describing these is as old yang and old yin lines. The idea is that yang is always becoming yin, and yin is always becoming yang in an endless cycle. A young yang line is newly yang and not changing yet. An old yang line is just changing to yin. A young yin line isn't changing yet, and an old yin line is changing to yang. So when you draw your hexagram, it might have a mix of all these lines, like this. Yang yin, old yang, yang yin, yang yin, old yin, yang yang. If you think about it, that's actually four kinds of line. Each one can be yin or yang, open or solid, and changing or not. OK, so that's what a hexagram's made of. Now how do you cast one? Well, asking that is a bit like asking how can I invite the cosmos to show me a hexagram, to show me my answer. And if I'm going to ask to be shown something, 
then I need to use something that's completely outside my control. And tossing coins is an ideal way of doing that. So to get from tossing coins to drawing lines, you say, I'll represent each of these kinds of line with a different number. This way of describing lines is a good few thousand years old. We don't actually know how many. So, Yang Yin is eight, Old Yin is six, Yang Yang is seven, and Old Yang is nine. And I'll let the cosmos show me those numbers through how the coins land. One side of each coin counts two, and the other counts three. It doesn't actually matter which way round you do it, but I go with the tradition that the side with the coin value on it counts three. So that's tails counts three, heads count two. And adding up the twos and threes gives you your lines. So head plus tail plus tail makes eight, and so on. Before you cast, you find your question. I'm asking for guidance for teaching this class. This is a real reading, by the way. Uh, I want the advice, and I don't know what it's going to say. So I shake the coins, cast the coins, and I have head, head, and tail, which is a seven. A young yang. That's my first line. It's at the bottom. Hexagrams are like plants. They grow from the ground up. The energy flows up through the hexagram from the first line up to the sixth. Now line two. Three tails is a nine. Two heads and a tail. Seven again. Nine, four. Three heads. That's a six. Changing in. Two heads and a tail. Seven. Two tails and a head. Eight. So, here's my hexagram. As you see, lines two and four are changing. So, that will give me a changed hexagram. First line doesn't change. The second line changes to yin. Third line doesn't change. Fourth line changes yin to yang, and the fifth and sixth lines don't change. Here are my hexagrams. What do they tell me? Well, until you know the hexagrams by heart, you'll actually be surprised how quickly that happens. You'll want to look them up in a book like this one. When you're looking a hexagram up, you'll find it according to the pattern of solid and open lines. And then after you've found the hexagram, you look at which lines are changing. You need to find the hexagram reference chart. Um, pretty much any I Ching book will have this chart, and the clever authors can get their publishers to put it conveniently just inside the cover. You look at your hexagram as two sets of three lines called trigrams. The bottom three, you find are the lower trigram. You find them in this column here on the left. And the top three are the upper trigram, which you find going across. And there's my first hexagram. You might want to turn to that hexagram in the book, just to check that it really is the one you drew, which it is. By the way, those trigrams are not just a lookup code. 
they're actually full of meaning in themselves. They make a really useful and approachable way to relate to your hexagram and imagine it. But that's for later. Then you go back to the chart and look up the changed hexagram back to the chart in the same way. Bottom trigram, upper trigram, there, 49. I follow Stephen Karcher and call this the relating hexagram. We'll spend time in the class talking about what that means and how you can understand the two hexagrams together. So I have primary hexagram 5 and relating hexagram 49. Next, in your I Ching book, you need to read the text that describes each hexagram overall, and also the text that describes the lines that are changing. So I asked please give me guidance on how to teach this class. And the I Ching says hexagram 5, waiting, and 49, radical change. Waiting with truth and confidence, shining out, creating success, constancy brings good fortune, fruitful to cross the great river. Radical change. On your own day, there is truth and confidence, Creating success from the source, constancy bears fruit. Regrets vanish. And then the line text. Always remembering that you're counting lines from the bottom upwards. So the changing lines for this reading are 2 and 4. 5 line 2 says, waiting on the sands. There are small words in the end, good fortune. And line 4 says, waiting in blood, come out of the pit. I'm going to need to think about that one. The next step for me is to take that answer in, understand it, absorb it, and start thinking about how I'll act on it. The I Ching Foundations class will carry on where this video leaves off. If you're happy casting your readings, but not so confident about interpreting them, this could help you to find your footing. We'll cover how to make the connection between the answer's imagery and your question, how to deal with apparent contradictions in a reading. That's actually just a matter of understanding how the different parts fit together, like the two hexagrams and the lines. We'll also cover how to find your question, because it's surprising how many interpretation problems actually start life as a question problem. And we'll do all this in a small, friendly group, one step at a time, and with oodles of practice. If this sounds like something that could interest you, please click through and take a look at the details. And thank you for watching.